Hello and what is up YouTube? My name is G3Iron and today is League Launch Day and I wanted to discuss a decision that I've made for the upcoming 320 Forbidden Sanctum League that I'm going to be playing a ruthless mode in solo, self-found, hardcore to start the league. Uh, I wanted to do this as a, a discussion format in a more casual way. No uh, PowerPoint presentations today, no Google Slides uh, no bullet points. Uh, just wanted to chat with you about why on earth I would want to do this um, and really what's going on kind of over the last couple of years of my involvement in Path of Exile and, and where I'm at right now um, and why I want to play 320 in the way that I'm choosing to play 320, which is using Ruthless Mode. So a couple of things. Um, last year, I would say, uh, basically, pr even prior to the announcement of Scourge, uh, I would say Path of Exile was losing a lot of its luster for me. I think the things that I was getting excited for um, were new patches um, more and more, like my excitement level for, for Path of Exile in general was going up, but it was only related to new mechanics coming out. And then when new mechanics didn't necessarily um, capture my attention or enthrall me in the way that they used to, uh, I just noticed that I wasn't playing and enjoying Path of Exile quite as much as what I used to do, which meant that the things that I enjoyed in Path of Exile more and more became our guild interactions, um, our guild play together, uh, as well as our guild bank uh, that we uh, did. And those were all good things and those were all fun things. But oftentimes, um, those were things that essentially uh, would last for about a week or two as everybody was excited to play Path of Exile. And then, of course, everybody's interest basically um, it doesn't flatline, but it goes down uh, the longer a league uh, runs on. And so what I noticed was, hey, I wanted to stick around and still play some Path of Exile. I still wanted that fun um, of either the guild bank or of guildmates playing all together or of pushing for goals. Um, but I noticed that it, Path of Exile wasn't where it was to be had anymore. So that combining um, with demands uh, from my kids and from work, um, I shouldn't put kids in the same category as uh, demands from work. That's that's unfair to my kids. Um, I should say opportunities for to go and, and be a part of what my kids were doing uh, grew. There was more opportunity for me to go and be around my kids as they were participating in sports and doing activities outside of the home. Um, that, that was pretty awesome. That was pretty exciting to be able to go and do that. And so that meant that since I was choosing to do more things with my kids and with my family, it meant that I had less time to game. Uh, and that's not a shot at, at games. That's not a shot at my family. That's just the life circumstance where we were at uh, at that point in time. And so now we're in a spot in time where uh, it is uh, the winter season. So my kids aren't playing outdoor sports at the moment. They are going to play some indoor sports. Um, but generally those are, are less time intensive, um, at least the ones that they're scheduled to play at the moment. And so that means I've got some more free time on my hands. Also, uh, in addition to that, the things that were draining me or were less than thrilling to me about Path of Exile, seemed to be offered to me in ruthless mode. For a long time, I played and interacted with Path of Exile, basically in a, um, <laughs> in a slightly manic state, bouncing between different ways to play Path of Exile. For my first few years of playing Path of Exile, I mostly played uh, in hardcore trade leagues uh, with uh, a dear, dear friend of mine who taught me how to play the game. Then... After we switched from playing uh, essentially almost always hardcore characters and dying and ripping and trying to see how far we could make it and what sort of builds we could come up with, um, then once we started playing softcore, the amount of builds that we could enjoy simply opened way up. What a shock, right? You can then uh, run around on a, you know, on a flicker strike, on a flicker strike slayer, or you can run around on a uh, frost blink. <laughs> that build still amazes me. A uh, frost blink elementalist. And if you get blown up, it's okay. If you get blown up one time due to lag or, or due to your own misplays. Okay, too many people complain that they died due to lag. Due to your own misplays. Guess what? You're playing it in softcore. You didn't just lose a whole character and you have to spend a whole bunch of time building yourself back up to be able to get to that same spot again. So playing in softcore had a uh, certain appeal and a certain... Um, really, it, it opened a door uh, to play Path of Exile in a different way that, than I had previously enjoyed Path of Exile. And that was fun. So moving from that... Over the last several years, using uh, various skills and combining what I like to do uh, in hobbies and in work, uh, which is to look at things kind of holistically and, and try and essentially take apart things. I've, I've used this as an example before 
what I really like to do with things is I like to, to, to take them. I'll use the controller as an example, a quick object lesson to describe uh, an aspect of my personality. I'm sure many of you have this aspect of your personality as well. If you want to get to know something and you're taking a look at it and you can examine it from every kind of which way, you're going to push all the buttons, you're going to see all the different things that it does, you're going to look at it from different angles and you're going to compare it to other things that you know, that's how you get to know something. That's how you get a, a tangible sense uh, in your own mind um, for what you're interacting with. And so that's what I like to do with Path of Exile. I like to try and look at it from different perspectives. I like to try and look at it from different ways. I've, of course, just like all of us do, have my own bias, have my own motivations, have my own things that I'm bringing to the table uh, when I'm talking about Path of Exile. But getting to play Path of Exile in a multifaceted way has given me a greater sense of appreciation for Path of Exile. If I only played as a hardcore trade league player with my, my couple of buddies who played over there that I originally started playing the game with, I would have a vastly different understanding of Path of Exile and a vastly different enjoyment of Path of Exile than what I have today thanks to playing in trade league, thanks to playing with killed mates, and throughout the years, thanks to getting to play a little bit in solo self-found, getting to play in several different events that have been uh, hosted and put on uh, through uh, by Grinding Gear Games over the years with multiple different formats, the Endless Delve, Endless Delirium, the Mayhem events, all sorts of things, the flashback events, um, in addition to all of the wonderful, awesome patches that come out um, once a quarter. So there's lots of different ways to enjoy Path of Exile, and I kind of like to dabble in all of them uh, now that I started dabbling in anything more than just hardcore trade, because as I've experienced more different things in Path of Exile, my appreciation for the game, my understanding of the game, and my enjoyment of the game has actually grown as I have diversified uh, how I've played Path of Exile. And so I'm looking at Ruthless Mode with those kind of goggles. I'm looking at Ruthless Mode and I'm going, this is another mode, another way to play Path of Exile that is going to provide um, a different angle for looking at Path of Exile. Now, I, I can already hear people making Kermit voices and Kermit memes, which we now have Kermit memes available on the YouTube channel. That's pretty funny. Um, we've also got them over on the Discord. But I, I can already hear people saying, well, Iron... My, by the way, I have a sore throat, so I'm not, I'm not even going to try the Kermit voice. But I can already hear people saying, well, Iron, Ruthless Mode isn't Path of Exile. It's a completely different game. <clears throat> In fact, they, they've removed you know, movement skills, and it's really more starvation mode than hard mode. It's not about the difficulty of the monsters. It's about your lack of resources for you as a player. And uh, it really isn't any more difficult. It's just about the time and the grind that you put in and, and the challenge that it is with limited resources. And when people make those statements and when people say those Kermit-like responses, um, which are completely valid, by the way, just because I call something a Kermit response, it's, that's just an alter ego sort of thing. It doesn't mean that it's a bad response. All I do when I hear that is I get excited. I... I I'm sorry, that's that's my player motivation. That's my aspect of my personality. I don't know. I don't know how else to explain it. I get excited. You're telling me I got limited resources. It's going to take me longer in order to, to grind out for particular things that I'm looking for. I'm going to have to get to know some things in the game that I otherwise never would get to know. I mean, who pays attention to attack animations on bosses or on monsters? If you're playing softcore, you don't. If you're playing hardcore, you do. But if you're playing hardcore trade, you can still just gear check everything. What would things look like for me as a balding, bearded, married, working with kids guy? What would it look like for me to be able to play Ruthless and really give it a go? Could I enjoy Path of Exile in that way? Could I enjoy gear progression in that way? Might I enjoy it more that way? I can hear more people saying, yeah, but what about the crafting bench? They don't have the crafting bench over there and support gems are going to be drop only. Like you're going to be so limited. Yeah. I'm going to have to figure it out. Not everything is just going to be already pre-planned, you know, spoiled, pre, just follow this, you know, um, already perfectly made track and perfectly made trench for you to just run along. There's not a path here for you to just go, yep, just plug and play and do this and, and really just be a pilot. Just be a pilot of something that someone else has already done. And Ruthless Mode, what it does is it allows me to embrace that fully. To just go, nope, 
Uh, I'm not going to be just a pilot of something that someone else has already built or something that someone else has already done. Um, and that's not to say that, that there's not info out there on Ruthless. It's just to say that because I haven't been around in Path of Exile for the last year, I am in a unique spot for me as a player to come into the game and go, yeah, there's a lot of things that I don't know, um, certainly about the endgame systems, but also just about leveling right now. Again, going back to attack animations and what level of resistances you need in the campaign and and what sort of builds could function. Like, I've been asking myself this question, okay? This is not a question that I would ever ask myself if I'm not playing Ruthless. What skills, what skills are best in each act on limited gear and with limited support gems? Which skills in and of themselves? I don't know the answer to that question. I might say, well, Freezing Pulse is really good in Act 1, um, but there's some other options in Act 1 as well. Okay, well, when you get to Act 2, it's awesome because you get, like, faster attacks and stuff. <gasps> but I'm not going to get faster attacks. Well, in Act 1, you know, you get Flame Dash, and that's pretty important. And if you're playing a Summoner, you can grab, you know, Zombies and... Oh, and you can mule some nice uh, support gems over for your zombies. Oh, but that's right. We're not going to just have infinite access to support gems. Zombies probably aren't the best if they're just on their own. What could possibly be, be good in Act 1, in Act 2, in Act 3, and so on and so forth? I've been asking myself these sorts of build-related questions, these sorts of game-related questions. And when I personally am enjoying Path of Exile the most, it's when I can daydream about it. It's when I can think about it. Um, outside of just playing the game, it's when I can come up with imaginative things about it. Um, it's when I can present you all with imaginative discussions and say, look, here's some, so here's some thoughts and some ideas that are rattling around inside my head. Here's what I think about those things, but I could be totally wrong and I'm going to spit them out there and we'll see what other people think. That's awesome. That's awesome. I love doing that. And when Path of Exile ceases to be that, like anything, you go, okay, well, you step back, you evaluate it, and you go, if it's no longer this thing that I'm enjoying, then what am I still enjoying? Now, confession to make. I played way too long the other day uh, in preparation for the uh, build guide recommendations discussion video. I played a couple of, of different builds that, some builds that I did not recommend and other builds that I did recommend. I messed around with them on standard for way too long, having a ton of fun. It was standard. It was not a new challenge league. It was not guild related. It, it really wasn't anything. It was just all of a sudden I was back playing Path of Exile again, and I was having fun. I was running through Blood Aqueducts. I was doing awful stuff. I just had way overpowered gear for the zone that I was in. But it was fun to use the skills that I was using and the combos that I was using. That in and of itself was fun. What Ruthless, what I'm hoping Ruthless can be, is not the overpowered, have a, touch of, uh, a bunch of stuff and be super overleveled to the zone. But I'm hoping it can be some level of that where I got into a state of what is oftentimes called game flow, where you lose track of time because you're just enjoying yourself. As the, as, as the old proverb or as the old saying goes, you know, time flies when you're having fun. It's describing a state of flow. You're in a state of, of mind. You're in a state of being where you're just enjoying what you're doing and you're present in the moment. And I think Ruthless offers that for me. I think Ruthless in Solo Self Found offers that for me because if I play Ruthless in trade, I'm just going to be playing the market. And I'm going to play, be playing Hideout Warrior and I'm going to be playing the economy. And that's not how I want to interact with Ruthless. If I want to play the economy, I'll go play Softcore and I'll just go make a, a whole bunch of currency and then I'll go make whatever OP awesome build I want to make. I don't want to do that. I don't want to do that. I want the game to smack me around a little bit. Now, the irony could be that I'm making this video and we're talking about this today and maybe later on down the road after I've had my 12th character die in, in, uh, in Soul Self Out Hardcore Ruthless, I'll just go forget it. I'm done. I'm no longer having fun, right? This, I'm, I'm, I'm married to one person and one person only. It's Mrs. Draconis. I'm not married to Ruthless. So I'm not going to act like here, you know, here's my undying forever pledge of playing Ruthless all the time. I'm not going to say that. But I'm going to say that I'm excited to play Ruthless for the prospect of what it offers, which is a new challenge, a new way to observe and take a look at Path of Exile, another angle to take a look at Path of Exile, and some other considerations and some new questions to be thinking about. And so that brings me in a very roundabout and long-winded G3 iron, balded, bearded sort of way uh, to the conclusion where I'm going to say I'm excited to play Ruthless because I want to bring Ruthless discussions to y'all. Not just 
the regular discussions that we do right here as a community, which we will continue to do. I'm still going to do our meta summary videos of Softcore. I still am trying to get my head wrapped around where Path of Exile is at over the last year since I've taken a break. And so I'm still going to be doing all the observational stuff that we normally do around here where we look at the economy. We're going to make videos about different um, metas that are emerging, different builds that are fun to play and you should try them out. Uh, also, different sorts of strategies and different sorts of combinations and different sorts of ways to approach the game that you can enjoy it, different sorts of content that's unlocked in the game through some cool interactions. We're going to do all that stuff that we normally do around here. But in addition to doing those sorts of discussions, I also want to have some discussions where I go, hey, I learned this thing in Ruthless and this is pretty cool. So that way other people might... There's no guarantee. But so that way other people might go, you know what? That Ruthless mode, that actually looks kind of fun. And if I want to interact with Ruthless, maybe maybe there's other people who are talking about it and interacting with about it and thinking about it as well. I'd like at least that in, in, in its idea form. I like that idea that we could be a place um, where folks who want to play and enjoy Ruthless, whether it's hardcore or solo self found, forget it. it. Not everybody's got to play Path of Exile in the same masochistic way that I play it. But to me, there's some level of fun and some level of flow that comes from playing hardcore where you go, oh my goodness, if I misstep, I, gotta, I, I just ripped my character and lost everything that my character was using. Um, that, that to me brings some, it gets some juices running. Solo Cell Found also does that because it, it cuts me off from being able to just go, well, I'll just go access the economy and use all these different principles of economics in order to make currency. No, can't do that. I just have to play the game. And in a game mode where less stuff drops than ever, it's going to be really tough. It's going to be hard. It's going to be a slog. I'm going to have to think through things. I might be using totems and minions and an active skill. That's one of the things I've been thinking about over the last week. In an environment where support gems aren't that um, available to you, aren't prevalent, aren't everywhere, and, and just readily available for whatever build or whatever skill you've got, then maybe one way to play Ruthless is to have as many different DPS sources up at the same time as possible. How could you do that? Well, you would need an active skill that you're using. Then maybe you'd have minions who are doing active damage themselves. And then maybe you'd have totems on top of that. It's a horrible idea. It's not going to clear maps. It's not going to kill Cirrus. It's not going to touch Shaper. It might not even get past Act 3 without dying. It's going to be awful. And I'm going to have a great time doing it over in Ruthless Solo Cell Phone Hardcore Mode. So that's what my plan is for 320. I've got a whole bunch of builds that I want to play. One of my goals right away from the get-go in Ruthless is just to see how far I can get each different character class. Like, forget even Ascending, right? I've already got one character class of each in Standard, you know, in, in regular mode. But it'd be pretty cool to say, okay, in Ruthless, like, this class performs this way using this skill versus this other class. And to have that experiential knowledge, that would be really, really cool. Not just observational knowledge, but experiential knowledge. And I feel like I've got that experiential knowledge on Softcore Path of Exile. I feel like I've got some of that experiential, experiential knowledge from my first couple years playing Path of Exile Hardcore. And now I just want to have that, all those experiences, um, again, with another opportunity to play a Ruthless Solo Self Found Hardcore. And, you know... Here, here's the thing. Maybe it'll be a flop. Maybe I'll just do it for one league. Maybe I'll do it for a week and then I'll quit. But maybe, just maybe, just like how when I migrated and started playing from hardcore to softcore and I found that there was this new way to enjoy the game and that unlocked new challenges and a new aspect to enjoy and appreciate the game, maybe that's what will happen with Ruthless. So that's what I'm hoping for. So that's the plan. I'm going to be streaming uh, basically every day U.S. time in the afternoon. Uh, on Twitch, at least for the first week. That's the plan. Uh, every single day, afternoons, uh, central time, it's going to be probably around noon, so 1 o'clock Eastern until about 5 or 6 o'clock um, Eastern every single day, four or five hours a day, playing the heck out of Ruthless, giving different things a tryout. Uh, so that's what I'm going to be doing. And then I'm going to be making discussion videos around Ruthless, and we'll see if it's fun. If it's not, there's lots of other things to do. If it is fun, awesome. And either way, thanks so much for joining us today. I'd love to know your thoughts down below in the comments about what you're planning on playing, if Ruthless is something that's exciting to you. If anything I've said here today either excites you, intrigues you, or totally turns you off maybe from Ruthless, I'd love to hear that down below in the comments as well. Thanks so much for joining us, and I hope the upcoming 320 Forbidden Sanctum League is the league. A Mirror of Calandra drops for you, just not in hardcore where you die before you pick it up, because that, be, that would be tragic. 
Thanks for watching that video. If you'd like more information on any of our discussion points today, you can see them down below in the video description. If you'd also like to join our Discord or support our Patreon, you can do so with the links down below. Thanks again and big shout out to all of our Patreon supporters.